Hello, my name is Andrew Perkins, and welcome to Converting an E-Commerce PSD to HTML, where we'll take the awesome design that Adi Perdila has created, and we'll convert that PSD to HTML and CSS. Now, I'm primarily a server-side programmer, so this PSD to HTML course will be from a server-side developer's point of view. And we're doing this course in preparation for a future course, where we'll use this design to create an e-commerce Laravel web application. Now, you should have access to the PSD files that we'll be using throughout the course. I have them here on my desktop. Here they are. So let's get the course started by first taking a brief look at the main index.psd file to see what we're going to be working with. Now, all of the other PSD files in here are essentially the same overall design with just different elements for those specific pages. And we'll be looking at those PSDs individually as we proceed through the course. After we get an overview of this index.psd file, we'll then set up our basic folder structure to hold our HTML, CSS, and image files using the HTML5 boilerplate. So let's open up our index.psd file into Photoshop. Now you'll notice that I'm getting a pop-up here saying that I'm missing some fonts, as I don't have all of the fonts installed on my machine that were used to create this design. You may or may not get this same pop-up, and that's okay. We can fix this in just a second. So let's click OK, and the PSD opens up. Now let's take care of those missing fonts. We can go up to Type and choose Replace All Missing Fonts. And that just takes a second. There we go. That's it. Now let's briefly take a look at our layers. I'm going to just zoom in on the design to 100%. You can do that by double-clicking your zoom tool. And back over here on our layers, you can see that Adi has done a great job of organizing this design for us, as we have folders for each main section of the site. We have the header folder, which is the very top part of our site up here. Then we have the promo slider folder, for the promotional slider here in the middle underneath the header. Then we have the featured products folder for the four featured products underneath the promo slider. And lastly, we have the footer folder for the footer at the bottom, which includes this top section with the phone number and the email, as well as the links and the newsletter sign up. And then the footer is also part of this bottom section here with the copyright notice. Now, inside of each of these folders, for each main section, they're broken down even further. So if we take a look inside of the header folder, you can see that we have a few more folders for the action bar, an alternative action bar, we have the logo, and the top area. So if we scroll back up to our header, you can see the top area is this very top section with the phone orders for the phone number and the email. So if we hide that, you can see it goes away. And then we have our logo here on the left. And then the action bar is this part here with the search bar and the username and the shopping cart. So we have two different action bars. We're currently looking at the alternative action bar, which shows that the user is logged in. But we can turn that one off and turn on the regular action bar. And this one has a sign in button instead. Let's close up the header and let's take a look at the promo slider. Let's scroll down so we can see the slider here. And so we have a folder for the nav buttons, which are these little arrows here. We have a folder for the shop now button, which is over here on the left. And then we have folders for each of the images that are shown here in the slider. Let's close up the slider and let's take a look at the featured products folder. Let's scroll down so we can see the products. And again, we have a nav folder for the little arrows here on the right. We have a view options folder to change the view for the featured products. And then we have folders for each of the individual products that are featured right here. Let's close this up and let's take a look at the footer. Let's scroll down here to see it. So the footer has two different sections. We have the top part which is this big section at the top for the phone orders, the number and the email, as well as the links and the newsletter sign up. And then we have the bottom section with the copyright information. And that's it for the footer. Now, lastly, we have this grid here. So we can turn on the grid. 
and we can use this to help us keep the margins and padding between our elements on our page consistent as we convert this to HTML and CSS. So I'm just going to turn the grid off. And now this design is being converted to HTML in order to be used in an upcoming course to build an e-commerce application using the Laravel PHP framework. So some of the design elements and features that are used in this PSD won't be used in the actual Laravel application course. So I'm going to be picking and choosing which features of this design that I'll actually code out into HTML. So we won't be using everything that's here. For instance, in our action bar here, we won't be using the drop-down menus for the search bar, the user, or the shopping cart sections. We also won't be dealing with multiple currencies. We won't be using a promotional slider. Instead, it's just going to feature one item, one promotion. We also won't be adding the ability to change the view of the featured product, so we won't be using this view option here nor will it be navigatable, so we won't have the little arrows here on the right either. It's just going to display the most recent featured products. Now for these products, we won't be using the star rating feature. And lastly, we won't be adding in the newsletter functionality into the final Laravel application. But we will be using pretty much everything else. So while we're converting this to HTML and CSS, we won't have to worry about those specific features which I just told you about. But now that we've had an overview of the PSD file and what's included, let's set up our site's folder structure to hold our CSS and images, as well as create our index.html page. Now rather than do all of this by hand, I'm going to use the HTML5 boilerplate. So I'm just going to switch into Firefox, and here's their website. You can find this at html5boilerplate.com, and this will give us an excellent starting point for our site. It comes with a lot of cool features, but I'm not going to go over everything that's included in the boilerplate, only the ones that we're interested in, which is an HTML5 index template file, and that HTML file uses normalize.css for normalizing the look of our HTML elements in different browsers, rather than doing a full reset. We also get a main.css file, giving us some base styles and a place to put our own custom styles. And additionally, that file also gives us several utility CSS classes that we can use. We also get Modernizer for detecting HTML5 and CSS3 features of the browser. And lastly, the template is cross-browser compatible with Firefox 3.6+, Plus, Chrome, Safari, Opera, and IE6+. Plus. Now to get the boilerplate, you just click the download button here. And I've already downloaded this in advance, so I'm just going to open up my downloads folder. And you just end up with this zip file. So let's extract this. There we go. And here is our boilerplate folder. Now I'm just going to rename this to ecom-psd to HTML. And I'm going to drag and drop this into my site's directory. Let's switch into sites, and here it is. All right, let's open this up into our text editor. I'm going to open mine up into Sublime, and here I am in Sublime, and here you can see our boilerplate. So let's take a look at what's included. We have a CSS folder for our CSS files, a doc folder for the documentation to learn about the HTML5 boilerplate. We have an image folder to hold our images, a JS folder for our JS files, and then we have a bunch of other helpful files. So we get like an git ignore, an ht access file, a 404 file, we have some icons for mobile devices, we have a favicon, and a readme file, and then we have our index.html file. Now you can go ahead and read the documentation about the HTML5 boilerplate if you'd like, but I'm just going to delete this doc folder as I don't need it. So I'll just delete this out of here. And let's now open up the index.html file. And in here you can see that we have some basic HTML5 structure set up for us. At the top we have a few conditional comments checking for certain browsers to apply a few classes to handle any browser quirks. It's also setting up some meta tags for us and it's already linking in the normalize and main CSS files for us, as well as it's linking in modernizer. 
Now down here in our body, we have another conditional checking if the browser is less than IE7, which will then just give them a friendly message asking them to update their browser. Right after that, we have a hello world paragraph, which will eventually replace. And then below this, we're linking in jQuery and a few JS files that the template uses. And you can also add your own JS into the main.js file. And then lastly, at the bottom here, it's giving us this snippet of Google Analytics code. Next, let's take a look at the CSS files. So in the CSS folder, here's the normalize.css file, which handles normalizing how our HTML elements are rendered in different browsers to give them a consistent look rather than doing a full reset. So I'll close that one out. And now let's take a look at the main.css file. Now this one gives us some basic default styles for our page. And if you scroll down about a quarter of the way, you can see that we have this section for author's custom styles. And this is where we can start adding in our own custom styles for our page. Now below our custom styles, it also gives us a few helper CSS classes that we can use for certain tasks like image replacement, uh, hiding elements, and we also have the clear fix styles here for clearing floats. Then below that, we have some media queries and some print styles as well. And that wraps up the main.css file. So that's it for the boilerplate overview. Let's now just make sure that our boilerplate is working by viewing our index.html file in the browser. Just going to switch into Firefox and we'll open up a new tab. And I can go to localhost slash ecom hyphen psd to html. And great, here's our hello world paragraph. And it looks like the boilerplate is working fine. And that's it. So we're now all set up to begin converting our PSDs to HTML and CSS. I'll see you in the next lesson.